Welcome back to the Keaton Knife Shop. Today we're going to do a commentary video on a cleaver knife build. So I had some spare 1084 line around the shop from New Jersey Steelberry. It is 3 sixteenths of an inch thick and just the right size for a cleaver knife. So just drew it on there with a pencil and uh, took this spare ceramic belt I had and ground it out. It's nice and thick, so make a nice hefty, hefty cleaver for opening boxes and doing odd jobs around the house. So I measured the thickness of the tang and then cut that measurement in half to, to scribe perfect center lines for my holes. And then brought it over to my mini mill from Harbor Freight to drill those holes. The two holes I'm drilling for the Corby's are number 11 drill bits. I'm sorry, number 12 drill bits. And then the center hole for the eighth inch pin is going to be a number 30. The cleaver hole in the front is a quarter inch hole. And then all of these holes are just uh, weight reduction. So that hole in the front, I'm not actually sure what that cleaver hole is for. So if anyone knows, uh, please comment in the comment section below because I'm kind of curious. My guess is, is that's for hanging the cleaver on a wall in a kitchen or something like that. But I then took a 3 16 drill bit and scribed the center line. Uh, that's what I'll be grinding to for my uh, edge. Took my handy uh, bevel jig that I, I built in a previous video and then got the grinding with a semi-dull 60 grit ceramic belt just to knock the corner down so I can save my nice new 60 grit ceramic. So I got started on these bevels. Uh, you can see me adjusting the screw on the jig to constantly move my angle down and work my grind back towards the spine. I then transitioned to a 120 grit belt and then finally an A100 uh, gator grit belt to get a slightly nicer finish before I hand sand it. And then I did the other side. I'm still getting to know this 2x72. Uh, it's, it's been great for me. It's, it's, it's a game changer comparative to the 2x42 that I was using, mainly in regards to the uh, VFD. Being able to slow it down is a, is a big deal. I then take it over to my knife vise and get to hand sanding. I use a needle file with the sandpaper wrapped around it, a flat needle file, uh, to get into that plunge line area. If anyone has a better idea of how to do this or, or any other sanding jigs you all use, I'd love to hear about it because it's a little tedious, uh, but it gets the job done. So I start off with 220 and then eventually I bring this knife, uh, actually here I, I leave it at 220. I bring the whole knife up to a 220 finish uh, right before I heat treat. Uh, I take some uh, needle files and then eventually a chainsaw file, a 5 30 seconds file to cut my Spanish notch, or sharpening notch. And then I go ahead and I start messing around with the handle and I do this so that I can be working on the handle while the knife is being tempered. Uh, so I have some old uh, Mexican Royal Ebony or catalogs uh, that I was able to reclaim and then I just took it, cut it, and then used my milling machine with a router bit on it to make a perfect block of wood uh, with, with flat and square sides. And then I cut that block in half and then set up my mill so that I will make perfect uh, 0.26 inch slabs or handle scales for my knife. Uh, so this is this is pretty handy. It's nice being able to take a block of wood and make uh, scales for a uh, for a full tang knife. So after I have it set up, I can just take one piece out, put the other piece in, and I'll have two slabs that are the same same thickness and relatively pretty darn flat. So 
Next I uh, clamp them onto the knife with a cant clamp, a cant twist clamp. And then I use the knife as a guide, a drill guide, to drill those number 12 holes and eventually the number 30 hole in the middle. And I turn on my tempering oven so that it's warming up while, uh, while the forge starts warming up. So I'll be ready to temper right when I'm done quenching. I get to use my three fourths of an inch tiny Venturi burner here to heat treat this knife. This has been giving me a lot more control than the forced air burner that I was using. The forced air burner is great for any type of forging, but it was just getting my forge too hot. Maybe it was user error, but I find I have a lot more control with the smaller burner. File tested, it's nice and hard. Knock off a bunch of scale here and then throw it in a tempering oven. Notice that I have a uh, nice cage built to protect the knife from direct heat from the elements, from the heating elements. And then while that knife is tempering, I'm able to get to work on the handle. This is a simple little 45 degree guide I made for uh, cleaning up the front of my handle scales. Give them a nice uniform angle. Just a side note on that tempering oven, I have it set at 397 and it normally lines out around 393 or 394 degrees Fahrenheit. So I feel like that's a good starting spot for, for tempering 1084. Um, you can go all the way up to 425-ish and still have a, a, a decently hard and tough knife. But I normally start in the 395 to 400 range. Uh, this is the homemade uh, countersink belt bit I made for Corby's. Uh, the center fits into the number 12 hole and then it makes a nice step. I go about 3 sixteenths of an inch into a quarter inch scale. So I have about a sixteenth of an inch ledge for the Corby fastener to sit on. So I then go and I uh, flatten these scales even though they've been milled flat it's nice to make sure they're flat on the granite block and then I start messing around with the Corby fasteners. So they come pretty long so I have to take them down. I can't remember what the exact measurement I was shooting for here I don't work with 3 sixteenths of an inch um, stock that often, but I think I was shooting for around 0.31-ish on the inside to inside Corby measurement. And then this is what the knife looks like as it comes out of the tempering oven. Next go over to the grinder and try to clean up uh, some of the scale off the knife make my hand sanding a little easier and then I hand sand it up to uh, 320 grit in this case because I'm going to be stone washing this knife. Turn my homemade etcher onto DC power. Uh, this is because I only want a deep etch in this case. I don't really care about the uh, AC power or give you a darker etch but the DC power will give you a nice deep etch. So I get a deep etch, clean it up with a couple strokes of 320, clean the blade off with alcohol, and then acid etch it in ferric chloride for about 8 minutes. And that's a 50-50 water and ferric chloride mix. And also I make sure to coat it with uh, baking soda at the end to make sure that acid is neutralized. And I shake it in this container with the rocks for about four minutes before uh, I feel like it gets a nice finish with the with the abrasives in the box in that container. Anything under four minutes it doesn't come out looking that hot. Being right-handed, I normally put the uh, the female corbies in first, and then I make sure the male corbies are on top so I can get to them easily with my right hand and then I just push in that center pin.
So the Corbys hold the scales on nice and tight, but I took, put a clamp on there just to hold it in the upright position. And then I take some uh, paper towels and Q-tips and make sure to get the front of the scales nice and clean, get all that epoxy off of there. Head off to the handy bandsaw, cut off the pins. And then head, over, head on over to the grinder and start cleaning it up. This wood is super tough. I have to be careful uh, not to grind it too hot and too hard. So I'll normally turn the grinder down to about 30 to 40 percent and make sure I have fresh belts on there. Uh, this stuff is super tough. I'm actually surprised every time I use it because it's, it's just so hard. And it makes your whole shot purple. <laughs> I get the hand sanding a little bit, make sure it's all nice and smooth in the hand. I can't remember how high I brought this up on grit, but I don't think I brought it up that high. Put an edge on it uh, with the belt sander running on very low speed. I get up to about a 400 grit edge, then I strop the knife, and this is sharp enough for what I'm going to do with it uh, around the house. You shave hair at this point. Then I oil it up with some ballistol. And then I decided, you know, it's I'm do a little testing with this one just for fun. It's because it has kind of a unique feel in the hand and it's heavy, so it sounds like fun to go test on a piece of 2x4. So I whacked the 2x4 around for a little bit and then I started batoning it into it. And the, the edge held up perfectly fine in, all, in this whole scenario. No chips or bends or um, any, any deformation of the edge at all. Got a little stuck there, which ended up being a good test because it did. I wanted to test the, the stonewash finish, and it wasn't flawed at all. I noticed that there was a knot in the middle of this 2x4, which was making it pretty difficult for me to get through. And then I w went in the kitchen, cleaned it, and used it to cut up my lunch. Steak, by the way, obviously. New York Strip. And that's it. This knife uh, turned out pretty good. I'll use it around the house, and um, I'm happy to, to have uh, built it. Please uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if y'all like this. And if, if y'all want to see more commentary videos in the future, just let me know. Till then, I'll catch you guys on the flip side.